Hello and welcome to Los Angeles Community Connections, reporting real issues that matter to you. I'm Maricela Lascano. And I'm Eric Skippings. Thank you for joining us here with today's top story. It may be the most ambitious plan to combat homelessness in Los Angeles. Proposition HHH is a $1.2 million bond measure that will house up to 10,000 chronically homeless. If approved, the measure will offer mental health services for drug and alcohol treatment programs. Los Angeles has the largest homeless population in the nation and has seen an 11% increase just last year alone. The most recent counts say an estimated 30,000 people live on the streets or in their car. Critics of the measure argue that the bond may be too expensive to effectively house and help the homeless. Californians are gearing up to vote on many important issues this November. One cru crucial measure provides money for public schools, K-12, through and community colleges. A yes vote on the Proposition 55 will increase income tax rates on high-earning Californian residents to help fund public education and children's health care. The ballot measure is a continuation of Prop 30 that is set, to ex is set to expire in 2018. A yes vote extends the tax until 2031. Critics say the tax extension harms the economy by discouraging small business owners to do business in California. Governor Jerry Brown recently signed a bill that guarantees the rights of transgender persons to have access to gender-neutral bathrooms. The bathroom bill requires businesses and government departments to post all single-stall toilets as gender-neutral by 2017. The Inclusive Restroom Access Law will provide non-gender-specific signs on bathrooms with one toilet. Only a handful of states have been known to support transgender rights. Transgender activists say it is a step in the right direction. In an effort to uncover the inning workings of the Clinton campaign, WikiLeaks has published more than 50,000 emails from the campaign chairman, John Podesta. So far, they've released a series of emails, including an excerpt from Hillary Clinton's paid speech to Wall Street elites, saying, you need both a public and a private position. The growing fallout has led to the latest firing of CNN contributor and Democratic strategist Donna Brazile. Hacked emails show that she shared questions to Hillary Clinton's campaign staff before CNN sponsored debates after publicly claiming to be neutral. AT&T has agreed to an $85.4 billion acquisition of Time Warner. If approved by regulators, the deal will be one of the largest mega-mergers in history. The merger is subject to approval by Time Warner shareholders and reviewed by the U.S. Department of Justice. Both companies are determining which licenses will be transferred to AT&T. The transaction is expected to close before the end of 2017. Peaceful protests against the Dakota Access Pipeline has received very little coverage up until recently. Journalist Amy Goodman covered and filmed security guards unleashing their dogs and using pepper spray on water protectors. Charges for criminal trespassing and rioting against Goodman were later dropped. And actress Shailene Woodley live streaming her arrest on Facebook with over 40,000 viewers. She was later released on bail and is facing trial in January. This pipeline is threatening the water supply and cultural heritage, according to Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Teenagers are sleeping less now than, now than ever before, according to a new study. Teens who tweet, text, and play video games before bedtime lose an average of two hours of sleep per night, according to University of Montreal study. The study revealed a link between electronic use and a lack of sleep and found that teens who use social media before bed get less than the recommended eight hours sleep. Doctors warn sleep deprivation increases teenagers' risk for depression, attention span, and can even contribute to weight gain. Believe it or not, Facebook is old enough for researchers to conclude that using the first social media site can actually extend your life. A study of 12 million Facebook users found a positive correlation between online interaction and living a happier life. The report says social networks like Facebook enhance people's real-world social ties that stimulate bonding and community. Researchers at San Diego University and Yale published a report in the National Academy of Sciences. And even if you don't have many likes on your Facebook page, the study says you can still enjoy a lower risk of mortality. Always eager to improve, Uber recently released a new feature in the app, allowing passengers to access their Uber passenger rating. Uber passengers can now find their passenger rating by following these easy instructions. Step one, open your Uber app. Two, select help. Then select account and payment. 
Then select Account, Settings, and Ratings. And finally, select I'd like to know my rating. We now turn to entertainment reporter Alex Stein, who is going to tell us about an interesting new comedy website and how one actor is lending his support to the Dakota Access Pipeline protest protesters. Alex? Thank you, Marcella. Both comedians and their fans know the struggle of finding new comedy shows in Los Angeles. The solution to that struggle has led many people to the website, The Comedy Bureau. The Comedy Bureau is a site that features a list of nightly shows to watch and perform in from the smallest open mics to the biggest clubs in Los Angeles, like the Laugh Factory and the Comedy Store. The site is the brainchild of Jake Kroger, a Los Angeles comedian who created the site to help comedians find their fans and find shows. Six years after its launch, the site continues to be updated daily with new shows and upcoming events. So if you're looking for a place to perform your stand-up in or watch your favorites on a nightly basis, the Comedy Bureau is your place. Actor Mark Ruffalo is speaking out against the construction of the controversial Dakota Pipeline Access, an oil pipeline set to span over 1,000 miles from North Dakota to Illinois, crossing over sacred Native American land. Ruffalo and the, tri and the tribe supporting the protest fear the pipeline will damage prayer sites and burial grounds. The pipeline developer, Energy Access Partners, claims the land is private and the proper permits were acquired. Those protesting the construction claim a 19th century treaty proves the land belongs to the Native Americans. In a show of friendship, Ruffalo provided mobile trailers with solar panels to provide clean energy to the protest encampment, which includes over 500 Native American tribes, the largest gathering of Native Americans in modern history. In an interview with CNN, Ruffalo says, a lot of the work I do has to do with protecting water, and that's what these people are doing here. And later on in our show, we're going to be speaking with a Los Angeles comedian about an all-new type of game show. Who's our guest this week, Alex? Oh, none other than the amazing Andy Erickson Stein talking about her show, Punchline Punch Out Live, but that won't be in for a little bit, so stay tuned. Awesome. Internships may be a source of experience, but if they fail to follow any of these rules, then they may be breaking the law. The internship must be similar to training that would be given in an educational environment. The internship experience is for the benefit of the intern. The intern does not displace regular employees, but works under close supervision of existing staff. The employer that provides the training cannot derive any immediate advantage from the activities of the intern. The intern is not entitled to a job at the conclusion of the internship. And finally, the intern is not entitled to wages for the time spent in the internship. If you feel like your employer is doing something shady regarding your internship, feel free to call the Los Angeles Better Business Bureau at 213-631-3600. Well, hopefully when you transition from internships to earning a living, you know how, you, how to manage your finances. But for most of us, it can be complicated. LACC reporter Yvonne Reyes is here to give us some helpful tips that are simple, not that hard to remember. Yvonne? Thank you, Marisela. As we get older and life responsibilities increases, it is very important to plan our future. Having a solid ground on our finances will give us freedom. One of quick, uh, quick tips, pay yourself first. Every time you receive a paycheck, save a certain percentage of your income before spending money on anything else. Choose to have your bank automatically deduct a certain amount of money from your account each month. Second point. Set aside enough money to cover your basic living expenses for three to six months. There are three categories for saving, very important. Money for an emergency fund and short-term purchases should be kept accessible. A certificate of deposit, a CD, which may earn more interest than a saving or money market account. Their money for long-term goals can be invested in assets such as stocks, bonds, or mutual funds, and they earn more. Know where your money goes is very important. Keep track of your expenses. Evaluate your habits rather than everything you spend money on during a one-month period. And watch those plug spending leaks and increase your purchasing power. For example, buying those expensive coffee drinks daily, eating lunch out every day, and making impulsive purchases. If you weren't spending this money, you could use it to help accomplish your life goals. I already saved $5 in one day. There are just a few ways to stretch your dollars. No matter where you are in life, begin saving today. 
and you will be that much farther ahead tomorrow. I'm Yvonne Reyes. Back to you, Erika Marisela. Thank you, Yvonne. We're going to turn it over to Alex Stein as he interviews comedian Andy Erickson on her brand new Facebook Live show, Punchline Punch Out. Welcome to LACC TV. I'm Alex Stein, and I'm here with Andy Erickson, host of an all new type of game show, Punchline Punch Out Live on Facebook. Thank you for joining us today, Andy. Thanks for having me. Can you tell us a little bit of what Punchline Punch Out Live is all about? Well, Punchline Punch Out Live is a game show for comedians and improvisers. They come into our living room and they answer funny questions and they battle head, head to head. They come into your living room? Yep, come they, on in. Your, your living room is the stage for this game show. Yeah, it's pretty legit. We have lights and stuff. <laughs> Can you uh, give us an example of what one of the questions uh, a contestant <gasps> might get? Oh yeah, on our last episode, we asked them, what is the name of a vegan restaurant for dinosaurs? And someone came up with Jurassic Fork. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> what, what do you think is one of the hardest parts about producing a live Facebook show, especially at your house? Well, the hardest part is probably people being late and then you just have to go live. <laughs> Like we start at seven, we start at seven o'clock, and one comedian didn't get there till seven ten, so we were just buying time, just like hey everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's fun too, though, and it's not serious, so people. You know, my uncle Chuck's a little bored, but he stays he stays tuned in. <laughs> uh, one thing that's great about Facebook Live is that it's easy to share. What is one of the big reasons why you chose uh, Facebook Live format for your game show? Well, I had seen other shows on Facebook, and it was pretty cool. And it's great because it automatically shares with your like network of friends on Facebook. So you kind of already have a built-in audience with your friends and family. You don't have to try to get them to like tune to like a station or go to YouTube. It's just right there mm -hmm. for you, which is pretty cool. As far as viewership goes, what, what numbers are we looking at here? Oh, my gosh. One time we had 22 people watching at the same time. Whoa. Oh my gosh. Now audience, they're able to interact. What, what, what's that experience like? It's really fun. They can ask questions and, and we kind of get it in real time. So it's, it's exciting and people get really into it. They want to answer the questions and so be funny too. They can answer questions and possibly win the game. Yeah, they can win too. The audience gets the place too. So in the format of this, there's two contestants and there's also two judges. Yep, two contestants, two judges. They're all comedians and they're all just trying to be funny and sometimes they win a prize. What kind of prizes? Last, last time it was a book that tells you things you could do with rocks. With rocks? <laughs> yeah. What was uh Like you could... Just throw? Throw them, okay. yeah. <laughs> uh, do you think Facebook Live shows are going to take off? I've seen more and more. Is it, is it becoming a trend now? I mean, I th we have another friend who has a Facebook Live show, and it's cool because you can have your own studio in your apartment, and you can get a lot of experience just with producing and coming up with content. And it's great because you have an audience, because a lot of time, if it's not live, you don't feel that same type of just energy. Mm -hmm. And on YouTube, I feel like you only get maybe like 20 or 30 views, but on Facebook, I feel like they're really good at pushing it on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think everyone should have their own Facebook Live show. <laughs> It's, it's one thing to have a Facebook Live show, but you have a game show. Yeah, it's like, a game show. That, that's a step above. So we plan questions and we try to make it entertaining, but it's great because comedians and improvisers, that's what they do all the time. So you just put them in a room together, ask them a question like, what's a Harry Potter book for sex education? <laughs> like Harry Potter and the Chamber of Abstinence. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I'm in my host phase where I just, after every question, <laughs> even if it's funny or not, you have to be like, good job. <laughs> Do you, what is one of your favorite game shows? I love Jeopardy because even if you only get one question right, you feel like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Wheel of Fortune was a big one. For that me. one's a good deal. They're all good. I love letters. <laughs> Do you, uh, do you foresee this, this game show evolving at all, or do you, do you like where it's at right now? Oh, man, I see it evolving. We're learning new stuff every single show, and it's, it's got a cool theme song, and every day it's getting better, so yeah. Is it more work, or do you think less work than you thought it was going to be? I don't know. It's so fun that I don't really think about it as work. I get excited to do it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. All right. Well, thank you so much, Andy Erickson, for joining us today. Yes, thank you for having me. Um, one thing is that we want to tell viewers to go out and watch. So what is a good time <laughs> for them to tune in? 7 p.m. on Wednesday Wednesdays night? Wednesdays at 7. You have to be friends with me on Facebook. So send me a friend <laughs> request. 
So you, you have to share it from your page on Facebook. Oh, yeah. And I, I think if you just find my page, it's, it's public, but... It's public? Uh -huh. Okay. So everybody, Andy Erickson. Be follow, my friend. Follow her on Twitter at Andy Erickson. Uh, be your friend on Facebook. And thank you guys for watching. I'm Alex Stein for LACC TV. Thanks for watching. After the break, we'll hear the fall sports preview from Darren McCoy at the sports desk. And later on, Tyler Chatsfield joins us at the opinion desk to give his opinion on fascism. Stay tuned. Here at the Los Angeles Community Connections, we strive to bring you both stories that impact our community and welcome guests in our studios that can bring riveting tales. Jeffrey Morales invites special guest Angelo Knox to the set of LACC TV to share his experience as a actor, producer, and rapper. Hello everyone, and welcome to LACC TV. I'm Jeffrey Morales, and today we have a very special guest, a native of the Bay Area who made his way to sunny Southern California. He's an artist, rapper, writer, actor, producer, and all around good guy, the man of many hats, Angelo Knox. Pleasure to have you here, Angelo. What's up, Jeff? Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. So, can you tell us, who is Angelo Knox? That's a good question, that's a good question. Well, Angelo Knox is um, a guy who makes hip hop beats from time to time, might do a little bit of acting, a little screenwriting, and, um, at the end of the day, he's just a guy who's trying to make it. That's good. So you mentioned rap and hip hop. I mean, can you tell us a little bit about the rap game and what kind of music you're currently working on? Well, I've been doing music all my life. Um, actually was mentored by Shock G from Digital Underground, who brought Tupac into the game, um, created the character Humpty Hump, who everybody knows. So that's where I kind of got started. And um, now I'm just working on my own stuff. Working on your own stuff and I guess, your own stuff, what kind of style is that? I mean, what kind of hip hop are you cranking out there? Definitely um, inspirational music. Stuff that I feel like can brighten up people's day, can show the, the humanity side of life. Well, that's good to hear. You don't hear a lot of positivity coming from the rap game in terms of that kind of message, but that's, that's, right. that's kind of good. That's good to hear. Right. Um, right. So, I mean, you currently, uh, you spent a year in Taiwan from what I know. Yes, right? I did. And yes, can you tell us about that? That was an amazing experience. I was over there studying Chinese language. Um, my interest in Chinese, by the way, is uh, to do co-productions with China in the film industry. So yeah, I spent a year in China, in um, Taiwan. It was awesome. Everybody's super polite over there. They party all night until 6 a.m. And um, I learned how to speak Chinese. So it was a beautiful thing. It was a lot of fun. Chinese, really? Wow. I mean, how fluent are you in Chinese? Um, honestly, at this point, I'm, I can probably speak like a child, like a three-year-old or a four-year-old. I could tell you what I want, where I'm going, basic communication, but I couldn't describe things in depth. <laughs> so that's my next, that's my next challenge. From what I hear in Taiwan, you did a music video over there. How did that go? Yes, yes. I did a song about the, uh, the city of Taipei, and then we shot a video in the city of Taipei with all famous landmarks. Um, and I got some of the students from the university that I was going to over there to join me in the, in the video. And um, yeah, I released the video and it actually made national news coverage over there, which was amazing. Wow, national news it coverage. awesome, yeah. So I mean, I guess after Taiwan and everything, I mean, which is big stuff, I mean, why the move to Southern California? This is home, this is home. So yeah, now I'm back here, um, just keeping everything rolling forward, keeping everything moving forward, planning on breaking into film industry, music industry out here. Wow, film industry. I mean, 
coming from music, I mean, how has that transition been, you know, going from music you know, to Hollywood? I love it. I love it. Because in my opinion, the music industry is just an individual sport where the movie game, the movie industry is more of a team sport because it takes, it takes a whole team to create a film. So I like the idea of working with a team to create a product where everybody gets to put their input in at the end of the day. So you pretty much feel like your music is kind of helping your film career right now? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it's a good topic, it's a good icebreaker, it's a good topic of conversation. Wow, I mean, so can you tell us what the future holds for you right now? Um, right now, I've, I just completed a screenplay. So just kind of working on that, drafting that out, and then working on the process to get that made into a full-length feature film. Full-length feature film, mm -hmm. wow, that's mm -hmm. good stuff. I mean, can you kind of give us a little- Stoner comedy. Stoner comedy. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Think um, Seth Rogen, James Franco, that kind of, that kind of humor. Wow, I mean, who would you cast for those roles? I mean, do you have anything in mind so we can? Um, I would like to see Mark Ruffalo in that role. Mark Ruffalo? Absolutely, because he's done so much serious stuff, I think it's time for him to do his, his comedy role. So, I mean, Mark Ruffalo in that film, that's pretty crazy. I mean, but would you like to star alongside Mark Ruffalo? Would you put yourself in the film? It's possible. It's possible. definitely a possibility. Definitely a possibility. possibility. I mean, do you see your music being a part of your film? Oh, for sure, for sure, 100%. I'll, I will produce the soundtrack. You're producing the soundtrack mm -hmm. for it. I mean, mm -hmm. what can we look forward to that? That's a given, that's a given. <laughs> so, I mean, where can the people find you right now? Easy, just Google Angelo Knox, I will pop up. Super easy to find. All right, all right, thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. Ooh, thank you, man. So that'll be it for today. You heard it for your, here first. Check out Angelo Knox when you get the chance. I'm Jeffrey Morales for LACC TV. Thank you, Jeff and Angela. Now for Sports Talk. Darren McCoy joins LACC TV to tell us what's happening in the world of sports. So Darren, it seems November is a very active month for sports. That's right, Eric. Uh, it's the only time all year round where all four of the major sports are actually playing at one time. The Fall Classic is upon us. The 2016 World Series is the 112th edition of Major League Baseball's Championship Series, a best-of-seven playoff between the National League champion Chicago Cubs and the American League champion Cleveland Indians. The Indians have home field advantage by virtue of the American League's 4-2 win in the 2016 All-Star Game. This is the Indians' sixth appearance in the World Series and their first since 1997, with their last series win in 1948. The Cubs are playing in their 11th World Series and their first since 1945 and have the chance to win their first championship since 1908. The matchup features the two franchises with the longest World Series title droughts, a whopping combined 176 years without a championship. The 2016 and 17 NBA season is the 71st season of the National Basketball Association. The regular season begins on October 25th with the, with the 2016 NBA champion Cleveland Cavaliers hosting a game with the New York Knicks. The Cleveland Cavaliers are expected to win the title again this year, but will face some serious op opposition from the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors had a huge offseason in the acquisition of Kevin Durant from the Oklahoma City Thunder. Durant signed a two-year deal for $54.3 million contract with the Warriors. Here are two notable facts from the week eight of the NFL season. The Bengal Redskins matchup ended in a 27-27 tie. It was the first time an international series game went to overtime and also the first time an international series game ended in a tie. It was also the first time since 1997 where two games ended in a tie in the same season. The Raiders were penalized for 23 times for 200 yards during their 30 to 24 overtime win against the Buccaneers. The 23 penalty set a new NFL record for the most penalties against the team in a single game. That's Sports Talk. I'm Darren McCoy. With Election Day right around the corner, I decided to talk to Los Angeles City College students to see if they've been paying attention to Donald Trump's controversial statements. As Republican nominee Donald Trump goes head to head with Democrat nominee Hillary Clinton, it's clear that America will find itself either returning to the leadership of the GOP, which we haven't seen in eight years, or follow the leadership of the first ever female president. I've decided to take to the campus of LACC to see if our students know the election, the nominees, and the policies they represent. Who said this? I have great respect for women. I was the one that really broke the glass ceiling on behalf of women. 
more than anybody in the construction industry? Trump or Kanye West? It's got to be Trump. Kanye West. Donald Trump. That's correct. Despite his recent comments, Donald Trump has claimed that he has done great things for women. The media crucify me like they did Christ. It's Kanye. Kanye. Trump. That was Kanye. How? You know, it really doesn't matter what the media writes, as long as you've got a young and beautiful piece of ass. Whoa. I would say Donald Trump said that. That was Trump. Kanye? That was Trump. Wow. Never, never would have thought that. All right, last question. Who said this? I know words. I have the best words. Kanye. 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 I mean, he writes music, right? He's a, he writes music. That was Trump. In 2015, when he announced for presidency, he said that he went to the best schools. He knows the best words, but the only word he could describe Obama was stupid. As the 2016 election draws nearer, it's no secret that this election will go down in American history as one of the strangest ones we've seen so far. While both candidates have said very questionable things throughout this election, that all ends November 8, 2016. Be sure to cast your vote so you can cement your place in the most historic election of all time. Reporting for LACC-TV, I'm Eric Skippings. Back to you in the studio. There is no doubt that this presidential election is the most controversial in recent memory. Allegations of sexism, hacked emails, and heated debates between presidential candidates Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump has left many Americans with an opinion. Here to give us his take on the rise of American fascism is LACC's own Tyler Chatfield. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. If you ditched eighth grade history, like most of Donald Trump's supporters, fascism is a way of organizing a society in which a government, ruled by a dictator, controls the lives of people and in which people are not allowed to disagree. Trump is on his way to becoming that dictator. Don't believe me? Well, here are some telltale characteristics of fascism the Republican nominee has exhibited over the course of this presidential race. Number one, a fascism believes in the power of continuing nationalism. Trump wants to make sure the world knows how great his country is and that no one loves their country more than him. Number two, a fascist holds disdain for the rights of humans. People know this one about fascism. Rounding up undesirables and shipping them elsewhere is what people associate Nazi fascism with. I suppose Trump thinks he's going easy on Latin Americans, given that he only wants to rip them out of their homes and communities, but is sparing them the trains, camps, and gas. Number three, a fascist is well known to use a common enemy or scapegoat to unify their supporters. Like chum to ravenous sharks, Trump will toss out corrupt politicians and biased media to the roars of his adoring fans. Number four, a fascist puts the supremacy of his military on exhibition and maintains this supremacy at any cost. Despite this nation spending more on military than the next eight nations combined, seven of which are our allies, Trump describes our military as great, but depleted and in need of repair. Other fascist hallmarks include rampant sexism, control of mass media, obsession with crime and punishment. The fact that such a large percentage of the American electorate is supportive of such rhetoric is terrifying. What's worse is that it's not likely to go away even if Donald Trump loses. Trump's popularity may fade, but someone better and smarter is waiting in the wings to take his crazy train to the next level. Just another problem to stick on President Clinton's list, I guess. I'm Tyler Chatfield, and that's my opinion. Back to you, Eric and Marcella. That's all we have time for. Be sure to check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash LACCTV to keep up with all the latest news. Reporting for LACCTV, I'm Maricela Lascano. And I'm Eric Skippings, hoping to see you all again very soon.